Hello, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a new video which is about view model in Android and uh, we'll be explaining what a view model is in this video and also we will explain what its role and how we create a view model and use it. First of all, let's understand what a view model is. As you can see here, you can imagine a view model as a bridge between our model layer and uh, the UI or the view. But what is this exactly? Basically, this is a, a clean architecture or a design pattern called MVVM, which is a very, a very popular one among Android developers. And a view model is one is a part of that design pattern. So let's let's understand that what that is. I've already made a post on my Instagram account. You can check my Instagram account to understand. So a view model acts as the bridge between your UI layer and data layer or uh, model layer, which is here is our UI layer. You could imagine it as a screen because usually in Android we have a view model for each screen, and this is the data layer or the model in which we have all our data operations like API calls, database operations and here in the screen of course the UI is just the screen or the user interface. Uh, it receives user actions from the, from the UI. So basically the this uh, data this screen or the UI sends actions and events like like toggling a switch, clicking on a button, or refreshing to get fresh new data. And the view model receives those actions. And then the view model updates the model layer uh, or the data layer where it sends a request or something to the data layer to make an API call to get fresh new data or to do an, uh, or to do a database operation. And then the model layer mod uh, notifies again the, the, the view model that, hey, we got the new data. You can now notify the, the the screen or the UI so the UI observe observes the new data in display to the screen so this is exactly what we wrote here after the UI sends that action then the view model receives it and updates the the model layer then the UI observes any new data that we got and also another use of our view model is that it handles configuration changes because as we know in Android when we for example rotate the screen our activity is recreated in all the states or all the variables inside it will be recreated as well and set to their new default values which means everything uh, that the user did for example typing something or changing some color all of that will be lost in and we don't want that in our app because that's a bad user experience so a view, a view model helps us overcome uh, that problem so as we see a view model helps us solve two problems first of all it follows the separation of concerns principles so it keeps our ui related logic right here and uh, it separates it from the ui itself or so from the ui components and making uh, to make our code cleaner and more easier to read uh, so yes the, the second problem of course the view model solves is those configuration changes problems so now let's see how we can create a view model. In a uh, empty Jetpack Pose project, let's now create a simple screen in which we will display a text and then uh, a text field. So whatever we type in that text field will be displayed in the text and then we'll see what will happen if we rotate the screen. So uh, the first thing we want to have is a common. Uh, that will fit our our uh, screen size so we need a modifier fill screen size and then we want to of course center horizontally the ele the elements so center horizontally or the components inside our common that's it for now for the common we want to have some space from the top that's so i'm just going to use a spacer let's say height is 30.dp import dp and duplicate it again because now I'm going to first have right here the text that will display whatever we write in the text field so text just a simple text and of course I will need to create a state for that so var we could just call it text by remember a mutable state of an empty string at first and now import this import again let's say now 
our text value is going to be the text set that we've created and then right here we'll create a text field so text field and the value is going to be our text this one and on value change that's now it's just format this a little bit like this to make it look better it's not formatting but here it is we could say uh, now on text field our text that we've created is going to be it like this and then to make the error gone we need a label so label that is just going to be a text a simple text we could say enter text like this and let's now add this experimental annotation to make that error go away and so yes this is it for our ui let's run the app and see what happens now now our app is running as you can see we have a text field here so let's just enter some text like this and here is our text that we've entered but this is the problem if i rotate the screen as you can see my text is gone and is lost because as i said uh, this text state like the, this one exists in the activity and when i rotate or, or on, on, on configuration change like a screen rotation change changing in the theme of the uh, device or changing in the language the screen is recreated uh, i mean the activity is recreated and everything is set to their default value as you, uh, which is in this case an empty string and to solve this we just need to create a view model and in the end a view model is just a class so nothing more than that so let's go to our root package create a new class which is going to be called view model like this and this is it now we have a view model so in our view model i'm now going to create my state instead of having it right here in the screen directly so uh, my text state is going to be a mutable state flow so private var i'm going to create text is going to be mutable state flow this one and it is of uh, a string by default an empty string and now let's create the public one for our screen that we are going to uh, expose in our screen so text is going to be text dot as state flow so now we have our state that we can use in our screen and of course uh, when we have a state like this in our view model we can just access it directly by saying view model dot text is now dot is equal to something we can do that by instead everything is actually supposed to be changed here in uh, our view model we rather just send events from the screen to our view model to change those but in this case i'm going now to create a function to do that so change because in a normal app you would have as another class uh, called state and another object class called events for better organization but for the simplicity i'm just going to create an another function here or a function in which we pass a new text which is going to be a string and then i'm just going to say text dot value is now our new text like this now in my class basically this is not the right way to do it this is now the right way to create a view model we still need to do something here but i'm just going now to show you how we do it at first and then do it the right way so to go step by step now we need to create an instance of our view model so private view model is equal to a view model like this oops here i need var is equal to view model the one i've created and yes and now i'm going to create my state variable here instead of this one so i'm going to say val text now is be, is going to be equal to uh, view model so view model dot text dot uh, collect as state this one and now i have my text so i'm just going to say text dot value and here again text dot value so now uh, I'm actually uh, accessing the one, the text state in my view model. And right here, I'm not just going to say, as I said, text.value is equal to text. Instead, 
I'm going to say view model dot change text and then pass it right like this. Right now we do we don't have to make this one a var but instead a var. Now if I run the app, we'll see a similar behavior, but we still have a problem that if we enter some text and then we rotate the screen, the text is still gone. Basically, in I guess in iOS development, this is the way we do it. So uh, because in iOS there is no problem such as uh, activity being destroyed in an, a configuration chain or something. But here in Android we do have that problem. In to create the Android view model, so the uh, solution of Google, you could say, we just need to inherit from view model this one in Android X lifecycle. We just need to inherit from that one and now we have an android view model which now uh, we're not going to initialize like this but instead we're going to say uh, view model by uh, view models and the type which is the one i've created view view model this one and we just need to now add the constructor like this and delete that now we have our view model so and then run the app so let's see now what's going to happen so let's enter some text or something like this now if i rotate the screen as you can see my text is still there and it is not lost even if i re-rotate the screen i still have my text so that's now why we need a view model so why even the first time when i created the view model i, I did lose the state because uh, that wasn't an android view model and I initialized uh, the view model in the normal way which is equal to a new view model you could say and that also is recreated basically uh, when the screen was recreated so now this is the solution to this so now the second thing I want to show you is that if you if we want to pass something to this view model by the cons or the by the constructor uh, basically as any normal class we create a constructor for our view model and then we for example if we want to pass a repository instance to make API calls or or uh, a database DAO or something but because I don't have those now I'm just going to pass a normal variable like I don't know uh, an integer number of type int for example like this and uh, now if I run the app the app will just crash because I need of course to pass this but I can just pass it from here instead I will need to create what's called a view model factory for this and in the view model factory is just uh, something that we could say defines how our view our view model is re is created and to create that now we want to come to this constructor right here and we need a, a factory producer that is going to be equal and open brackets like this object uh, view model provider this one that will provide the factory for us factory like this and then open another brackets and override this one which is the create function and uh, by default it will just create it like this if we don't have constructors this will work fine but uh, now we have constructors that's why we need to actually call our view model which is this one that we created and now pass uh, like an integer or something that we created so we could say number is equal to one for example and then say as write as t so that's how we create a view model factory and if we run the app now we should everything should be fine if we enter some text and we rotate everything is fine but uh, previously for example if I didn't create the view model factory and then I try running the app I think it should crash now because my, as you can see because my view model needs needs a number to be passed to and we need we can only pass that with the view model factory so yes this is it for this video now we just show you how you can create view model uh, in fact we in in like in real life apps we don't actually create factories like this but we have other solutions which is uh, the most popular one which is dagger held which is a library for dependency is injection that just inject our view model and create it for us behind the scenes but in here we don't have that that's why i just created it like this 
and yes so i will do i will do a video for that in the future but this is it now for our view model this is what we needed as i said we to store our states uh, to not lose them in on, on, on configuration changes and also right here uh, our view model stands as a bridge between our screen and data where it receives user actions and then it updates the model if needed or if it just does have to do some logic operations or something it then notifies the screen so yes this is it for this video thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video and if you have any questions uh, you can leave a comment and see you in another one of course you, i will leave the link to this project to this app in the description on github so this is it for this video and see you in another one bye